Another round of rain is headed to Southern California by the weekend. Carlos Salcedo, Omar Lewis and Mary Beth McDade all standing by live from the areas hardest hit by the storm. But we're going to start off with meteorologist Vera Jimenez. She's got to look at how long this storm's going to last and when the next one's going to hit. Vera? Well, yes, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and start off with the Doppler. But this one is going to be with us at least through Wednesday morning, at least through Wednesday morning. And we are going to see uh, stronger rain uh, as we make our way from Tuesday night into Wednesday. But for for now, we are seeing more active weather for the northwestern end of the viewing area from as far north as Santa Barbara across the Carpinteria, moving towards Ojai and Ventura, and of course, Fillmore, Santa Paula. They're also going to be impacted, as well as Camarillo and uh, Oxnard and Thousand Oaks. Simi Valley, of course, is also going to be in the mix. We're also seeing some activity near the San Fernando Valley towards the western end. Uh, Calabasas was getting some earlier, but it looks like now they're seeing a small break. As we make our way towards LA proper. We're also going to see activity now make its way through Hollywood and downtown Los Angeles across the South Bay heading out towards Long Beach and Seal Beach, Norwalk, El Monte. And what you're seeing here is not just the green, but you're also seeing the yellows and the oranges, which indicate that we're also seeing some heavier rain, not just the light to moderate, but moderate to heavy in some of those cells. Uh, tomorrow, there is a potential that we could see some thunderstorms and where we see those thunderstorms, we could see rain rates of up to an inch per hour which is going to be quite significant. And then, of course, we could also see some small hail along with those thunderstorms. We'll take a look at more details and the numbers in just a few minutes. For now, I'll send it back to you guys. Vera, thanks. This latest storm causing more concern for residents who live on the Palos Verdes Peninsula, where the hillsides are shifting at a record rate, putting hundreds of homes in danger. The ground is literally opening up in Palos Verdes, with cracks and fissures getting deeper and wider. A scary situation, Mary. Beth McDade live in Rancho Palos Verdes where residents are hoping for help from the governor MB. Uh, yes, uh, Micah and Sandra, they sure are. You know, city and county officials tell us that the land up here is moving at a magnitude seven times more than it used to. And as you guys were just talking about, more storms are on the way. And so now they're asking the governor for help. The road continues to bend and buckle along Palos Verdes Drive South near Portuguese Bend in Rancho Palos Verdes. The posted side warns rough road and boy, do they mean it. Well, you can definitely see the cracks getting deeper very quickly. Very dangerous and scary. Longtime Palos Verdes Peninsula residents say they've never seen it so bad. I've been traveling over this road for, you know, over 55 years, you know, since I was a young child and I've never seen it like this. But in particular, in, in the last few months. Shifting land across Rancho Palos Verdes has long been a concern, but city officials say this season's back to back storms with record breaking rainfall has fueled unprecedented movement. It's very concerning. Um, especially with, you know, Wayfarer's Chapel and then the neighborhood and the people's homes with the cracks. Yes, the Wayfair Chapel is now closed indefinitely. Homes in the Seaview neighborhood cracked and red tagged and more than eight miles of hiking trails are also closed. We're asking the governor's office to declare a state of emergency specifically for our city. L.A. County Supervisor Janice Hahn is urging the governor to come see all the devastation with his own eyes to understand the urgency of this request. And the mayor says that if Governor Newsom does declare a state of emergency, that will allow them to expedite some plans they have to shore up these landslide areas. For now, reporting live here in Rancho Palos Verdes, Mary Beth McDade will send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Mary Beth, thank you. Also tonight, residents in the hills of Beverly Glen are on edge. They're worried that more rain will bring more landslides and maybe more damage. That area was hard hit by the last storm, and a lot of people there are worried more rain could mean more problems. Omar Lewis is in Beverly Glen tonight with a look at how homeowners are trying to protect their property. Omar.
Micah and Sandra, since the last storm, L.A. City firefighters say 44 homes in this area have been inspected and they've actually increased the number of red and yellow tagged homes damaged because of shifting soil here in Beverly Glen. It's a problem homeowners are all too familiar with one they say has them hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. Sandbags, excavators, and cars crushed by moving land still line Caribou Lane in Beverly Glen from the last storm a few weeks ago. And with more wet weather at their front door, residents here are trying to remain optimistic. I won't say it's not uh, worry-free, um, but we also have the comfort that this is not 12 inches of rain in two days. They're holding on to hope after an entire home slid right off its foundation in the previous storm. Video from a neighbor shows crews working to ready the area for this week's atmospheric river as excavators dug out mud and debris, clearing the roadway. The house that ended up as a pile of rubble in the road has also mostly been cleared. As you can see, it is no longer in the middle of the road. There's equipment there. Uh, they created a big pile of uh, rubble and covered it with plastic in preparation for the uh, storm. With more than 500 landslides reported across the city of L.A. in the last storm, L.A. Mayor Karen Bass says over the past few weeks, crews have been preparing for this storm by reinforcing hills that are at risk of mudslides, repairing more than 4,000 potholes and fixing underground equipment and vaults to prevent power outages. For those who live on hillsides like this, they say preparation is key. So it's um, just a question of preparing as best that we can um, so that the mud has a place to go if it decides to do that. Since the last storm, the city of L.A. Fire Department says they've inspected 44 homes in the Beverly Crest Bel Air area. Seven homes have been deemed unlivable, while yellow tagged homes increased from seven to 11. As signs now warn of the unsafe conditions here in Beverly Glen, the hope from homeowners is that their properties stay on the hillside after yet another round of rain. Yes, it's on top of saturated soils, and yes, it's still a danger. But I'm, I'm hopeful that this isn't going to be the same cataclysmic event as, as a couple of weeks ago. And the city of L.A. has activated its emergency operations center to monitor this storm and coordinate any resources that may be needed here. We can also tell you that emergency crews will be working around the clock tonight should any problems arise like those landslides or power outages. That's the very latest here live in Beverly Glen tonight. I'm Omar Lewis. Sandra, Micah, we'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Omar, thank you. Residents in La Habra Heights are hoping to prevent a repeat of the last storm that sent a river of mud flowing through the community. Mudslides and debris flows damaged several homes and residents are hoping this storm won't make things even worse. KTLA's Carlos Salcedo is live in La Habra Heights. He's got a lot more on the preparations there. Carlos. Yeah, well, things not too bad right now. We are seeing a light drizzle, but officials say they're prepared for the worst. Now, they do have this heavy duty equipment behind me ready to go in case it's needed to remove mud debris. As steady rain keeps falling on an already saturated landscape, residents are hoping sandbags hunkered on tarp covered hillsides will withstand the test Mother Nature seems to be throwing their way. I'm not really concerned because it's not coming down too much. It, you know, it wasn't like two weeks ago where it was nonstop for three days. Um, I know it's our, you know, the, 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 the soil is already wet, but I'm, I'm not too concerned. Officials and residents in La Habra Heights and Hacienda Heights don't want to see a repeat of the damage left by the previous storm. This is dramatic video from two weeks ago as mud rushed through a La Habra Heights neighborhood showing how quickly mud and debris flows can move. The homeowner says their guest house garage was wiped out, but the main house was spared. In nearby Hacienda Heights, one home was red tagged and another yellow tagged after mud crashed through walls and damaged the structures. Mud filled roads were also closed off, canceling basketball practice at nearby Hacienda Park. So they did cancel a few of the practices because of the landslide up here. The park now storing heavy equipment and machinery needed in case the relentless rains trigger more mudslides and debris flows, forcing evacuations. And we did have a chance to drive around earlier. The roads are still open at this hour. Officials say they will be out here monitoring the situation. 
We're live in La Habra Heights, Carlos Salcedo, KTLA 5 News.